The wife of Nigeria's President Aisha Buhari says she has returned to the country after medical treatment abroad. Mrs. Buhari, however, did not disclose her returning destination and the ailment she treated when she left Nigeria. The Nigerian president's wife's departure abroad came at a time when the government said it has closed its airports to international flights to curb the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Only flights on essential duties were allowed to leave or enter the country till this period. Recently, another relative of the president, his nephew Mamandaura, also left the country for the United Kingdom during the week, violating the international travel ban. Although the reasons behind Dara's departure to the UK is unknown, uh, there are claims that he embarked on the trip for medical reasons. A family source who spoke to the news agency of Nigeria refuted the claims, saying that the president's nephew embarked on the trip for reasons unrelated to COVID-19 and that he is in good health. And we still have in the studio with us uh, G.D. Benton, a public affairs commentator. Thanks uh, for joining us once again. Thanks for having me. I'm going to speak quickly on um, Aisha Buhari's departure. Um, why does it seem like a lot of people um, are bothered um, about this? And, and what, what's the significance in any way of her being able to leave the country? To the extent that the government is giving the impression that the airports have been closed, to the extent that the government is giving the impression that only flights on essential, emphasis on essential services, are being allowed in and out. Um, and evacuees, those being evacuated from other countries and those being evacuated from Nigeria. Um, so again, it's a sad um, development in our national life. It's a sad commentary. Um, the president's wife has gone on medical um, tourism and she's coming back with a lot of fanfare. Um, it's an indication that the government hasn't done what it's supposed to do in the health sector. I read a piece by Femi Adishino in the course of the week where he was trying to reel out the achievements of the government and he indicated some in the health sector. And I chuckled, because if indeed they've achieved that much success, the president's wife should have been an example um, of vote of confidence in that sector. Um, similarly, um, I think when the, when the son had an accident riding a bike, he was flown abroad. Yeah. Um, in the course of the COVID pandemic as well, the Secretary of the Government of this Federation said said before the uh, House of Assembly, or House of, sorry, House of Representatives, that they didn't know that there was this much rot in the health system in Nigeria. So again, it goes to show that um, whilst all animals are equal, some are more equal. And it also you know, makes you know, me want to ask about the international travel ban um, that is well, supposedly in existence. Does this you know, maybe mean that you know, in, even when there is an international travel ban, there are still VIPs leaving the country? Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic? There's an international travel ban for people like you and I. All you need to do is be a VIP. And by VIP, you don't necessarily have to be in government. Because Aisha Buhari is not in government. She's the wife of the president. That's not any official capacity. So the travel ban is for people like you and I, or people who are not um, political elites or politically connected to the powers that be. And that's, that's what we're saying. W would you expect that this should end with just an outcry? Um, are there certain things that you would expect the government should be able to do, um, or Nigerians maybe? Well, what I would expect the government to do is to bury its head in shame, offer apologies. It's, in fact, some people should resign, maybe in the health sector in the aviation, or in the aviation sector. But um, again, this continues to happen. The slap on our faces continues to happen because we rant and rave on Twitter, and we ended at that. Uh, when Fela said, uh, Mama did for house, Papa did for house, I know one die, I guess one child. He foresaw a time like this, and he, saw, he foresaw several other episodes. I mean, this is enough for people to hit the streets. And it's not for vandalism or damage to property or anything to, to happen. On the strength of this, we've seen, on, on the strength of things like this, we have seen in countries where people do a sit out on the streets. I mean, the government will be responsible to deprive the people of the right to protest because this is clearly resources of the states that are being used. I mean, she went on an Air Force One in no official capacity and arriving to a official welcome. I worry for our country and I worry that we continue to celebrate things like these are ordinary things that we shouldn't bother with. I mean, again, we only hear about this now because we already heard, found out through the grapevine that she had left the country. She didn't leave the country with fanfare. 
Um, you talked, you mentioned about the president's relative who is also out and about, and that has generated a lot of um, comments as well on social media. Clearly, it's an indication that the government has failed in there, that space. There, there is. Um, there were times when you know other Nigerians, you know, yeah. have been prosecuted. Funke Akindele, yeah. um, for example, you yes. know, was prosecuted, was um, charged to court, I believe. Yeah. Um, for, of course, these same infractions yeah. on COVID-19 yeah. protocols. Yeah. Why doesn't the same rule apply um, to people like the president's wife? It is we, the people. We ask for the head of Nkakindele and ask for the head of Nara Mali. Maybe we should deploy the same energy to ask for the head of all the other people. So why, why, don't you, why do you feel Nigerians aren't doing that? Do, do you feel they've, they know that it wouldn't happen? Docility. We shouldn't just, I mean, if we ask for it and it doesn't happen, we should hit the streets. We should, that's what should happen because you can't, you can't have different laws for the same offense. Funke Akindele deserves a national apology or from those who persecuted us. Dito Naramali, I mean, you probably saw the letter that was written by the airline that conveyed Naramali well, in his second attempt, so he appears to be a serial offender. The, 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 the letter that the, yeah. the CEO of the airline wrote, um, claiming innocent, that he didn't know it was some useless people, to use his words. But government officials, time and again, have done worse, whether it's in the National Assembly, or government functions, you see them when they take pictures, they don't observe the social distancing. You see the drama in Edo State, the political gathering, where was social distancing in that? When they gathered, you know, the, either party, by the yeah. way, where was social distancing in that? But if it was the ordinary man on the street, the, what do you call it, the policemen or the officials of the state would have been, what, going after them without caution for themselves. Because when you try to arrest somebody, how about you exercise some caution? Maybe the person is also even COVID-19 positive. Yeah. So to go back to the issue, um, it's a sad development. Um, I do not envy the president and his media handlers at all. And the media handlers haven't done a good job in managing negative um, developments around the president and the government. Thank you so much, Gide Benson, for stepping in once again and uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for having me.